In this video, I want to show you all the paintings I did inside my very first watercolor sketchbook that I finished front to back. This is my Strathmore 400 series watercolor sketchbook in A4 size and I started to paint in it in 2020, so took me two years to finish. I have a new beautiful sketchbook on my table prepared for action, so watch until the end of the video to see that new special replacement. So I first started this sketchbook in 2020 and this was my first page. It's not an entire painting, it was just a very tiny watercolor sketch. Since the original purpose of this sketchbook was to present myself with it during exhibitions, I just wanted to have it on display in my studio so that people can flip through, which actually is happening even though the purpose sort of changed along the way. I had a lot of fun <laughs> drawing and painting this tiny watercolor sketch. The idea behind this was something like a symbol to boost my creativity so yeah i used a little bit of the metallic paint to embellish that so that was a good start so this was the first official painting in my sketchbook and you can find a youtube video a lot of these paintings are on my channel i'm gonna link all those videos down below in the description so that you can easily find them and I remember that I was planning this sketch for a long time. I did the drawing. None of these drawings were traced or anything. Sometimes when I prepare a larger piece, then I prepare a sketch on a separate piece of paper and then I trace that sketch to the surface so that I don't accidentally mess up watercolor paper before painting because watercolor papers they can be very sensitive to erasing so just if you are doing a pressure piece that i would recommend to trace your sketch but in the sketchbook it seemed redundant to plan this much so i just erased a lot and i liked this look this was one of my favorite pieces and even served as my profile picture on my social media up until now on one side usually i did the sketch or the painting and on the other side i wrote a couple of notes and mainly i wanted to preserve the coloring and just make these tiny color notes about which combinations i used in case that i decide to remake this into a larger piece it was not entirely made in watercolor the background the bright yellow background was done in gouache indian yellow all right so that's the first page i numbered the pages Second page. This was something that I still felt very precious about these studies. I still wanted the sketchbook to have a very clean look, even though the face did not turn out exactly like I planned, but I loved the kimono. I like this type of coloring that is not too contrasty and not too flashy. This is a rather subtle color palette from all the color palettes that I have been using. And I like a lot of details on that butterfly umbrella. And I like the idea I think this would make a good painting if I was to make it a larger one, but it's still not something that I would rush to do right now. I liked that flow. I think that was heavily inspired by the anime that we were watching at that time. I can't remember if that was Naruto or Inuyasha, maybe. I can't remember, like that was two years ago. Let's move on to the third page. This was the sketch that caused the direction of the entire sketchbook and made it into a sketchbook, finally. Don't know quite what's wrong with it. I think the technique just doesn't work very well, even though I like that perspective and now it's not that bad. I think this composition is nice when I look at this. This one, I was not happy with it. I made a video about the process, but then I deleted it. So yeah, it was a three color study. Let's move on to the next one. On page four, I already knew that sketchbook is for sketching and that we need to do studies in it. So these are mouth watercolor studies. I don't like any of them, honestly, but I filmed a tutorial for my Slovak community and I used a limited palette of colors for that one so they don't feel overwhelmed when they follow me. In this little exercise, it was just like how to practice these things and use different coloring for different types of of mouth. I will probably do a remake of this tutorial and post it on YouTube. So that's about the page four. 
On page five, I made something that you saw on my channel. I used the fourth page to review the sketchbook and ever since I got used to it even more. This sketch is one of my favorites. It wasn't my audience's favorite, but it was my personal favorite. I used a reference from Pinterest. I think it was a doll to draw the face proportions. These are not the proportions that I usually draw. You can see that it's very different, but I love the way that I drew and painted the hair using the negative technique and I like that flow the hues themselves how they contrast is really nicely done that's what I want to focus on in my work those are just beautiful textures beautiful colors very simple color scheme and this one I think showed how the paper can handle dark colors and it can handle them very well that paper really fits the purpose and that is to practice I really like this one that was in January 2021. So on this page I did the paper test and then it was weird to paint on this one because this would not fit with the painting and so I just grabbed a study that I did at that time on a loose sheet of paper and just glued it in. This study it was a live demo that I did during portrait workshop and yeah I have to paint very quickly because you have a bunch of people around and they usually listen for five minutes and then they space out so I need to make my point very quickly and that taught me a lot you don't have time to mess up you just have to go straight after that point otherwise they will fall asleep so this is one of those studies I'm gonna have one more like this in a page that's following and here is still January 2021. This is one of my favorite works. You can find this one on my channel as well. I talk about learning watercolor and drawing skills with this video. I took my sweet time doing this study. I wanted to focus the study not on the face details. I like how the face is simplified, but on the kimono, which is obvious. But in the end, I didn't like the pattern. Around that time, I discovered that I like patterns in all their forms. I decided that I want to explore that into my work. I want to combine it with my portraits in a way that is not so obvious. And this was just the start. I had no preparation for the kimono and then I improvised and then I just discovered that the pattern doesn't fit together. This one is different than this one, even though it looks the same. And here the contrast, it is not exactly how I envisioned it. That was probably the only thing that I was not happy about but overall it's one of my favorite pieces in the sketchbook. All right, moving on. This is another page that is half done in the sketchbook and half is a glued in loose sheet of paper that I did around that time. They were supposed to be just like head studies and then I sketched them and I couldn't figure out how to stylize them basically or what I wanted from those paint studies to learn. And they were unpainted, just like sketched in pencil for the longest time. I think I was done with a couple of more pages before I went went back and properly painted them. I found out that the type of face that I like, it has sort of a bigger ears than you'd normally expect. I find that aesthetically very interesting and I just picked that face on purpose. Moving on. You saw this sketch been done on my channel also probably the video will be linked down below and it was just a study also in form of sketch has been not painted for a bit i think i struggled for two weeks before i decided what to do with it and then i just improvised and i love how the watercolor background turned out the patterns i wanted to do something that would connect them but also would be like two sides of one coin which was actually the name of that painting but visually just doesn't work that well i'm very excited about the background the whole idea the two people and like how i did the hair but i was not content with the shirts the shirts were a downside of this design i think let me know your thoughts i'd be happy to learn what you think Moving on, and this is 10th page. So here 
I opted out not for portraits, but that was a class that I did online for my Slovakian community. And also I think that this is also on my Patreon, the international Patreon, Jane Berta. And that was how to draw a creative illustration with a repeatable pattern and how to combine different elements and experiment with them. And also was done in a limited palette of three colors, two colors, I think only. This was probably Prussian blue and red and then golden embellishment. This one was painted with Jackson's watercolors and that was paints gray, red and a blue. Very much enjoyed the process of both. That was fun. To continue that thought about the re repeatable pattern. I did a drawing exercise combining face and the repeatable pattern. <laughs> so the result of that drawing exercise was this sketch. I want to say that it's not perfect technically, but I'm so excited about this painting and the entire sketch and how I combine these elements. Sometimes I paint from a photo, which was what I was doing lately. But here I I did everything, like combining of that flowers, where they're gonna be. I might do a video lesson for you if you were interested to see how I did it. You draw a poppy on a piece of paper and then you just copy it on different places. <laughs> I think I used two types, this open one and this closed one. So I think that this one has a potential to be a finished piece. I think that this one I could do as a very large painting. Let's move on to the next page. Ha! Page 13, but this is page 11. What happened in the middle? Nobody will know. It was such a mess up in there. And I glued it so that nobody, including me, knows what happened there. That's a mystery. It will be a mystery forever. Now we are on the page 13 and you might be familiar with this face if you are not completely new to my channel because I made a real-time tutorial and during real-time tutorial we sketched this face, we color mixed, we used a limited palette. So that was a color mixing exercise and then painted the entire face. Step by step it was a one hour long free video here on YouTube and I will link it down below for you. I love this portrait. Very contrasty. This is one of my favorite pieces. You know I like green. If you didn't notice then I'm stating it here. This is the color palette that really excites me. I think that this picture couldn't be more green than it is. I also used the Segura green which was a metallic or reflective color that I didn't know how to use but I just mixed it into my other greens and it looks nice when you look up close that painting. I messed up the face during the painting process. I wasn't paying too much attention. And then I use Caran Dash Luminance colored pencils that have a very good ability to repair your sketch. They have great coverage and I just use them to basically draw a completely different face over the original one. The beautiful watercolor negative painting technique and the leaves, the background and the effects, they all stayed. So this is a mixed media piece and also one of my favorites. You can find this video also on my channel. That one was filmed. From now on, I don't know which paintings are not on my channel. This one was. I talked about art and using your emotions and how your emotions can change your art. And I told real story about what happened when I started to paint this painting because that was in February of this year, 2022, when the conflict in Ukraine began. And it was strange because I started the painting the day before and I had to finish it. I was very emotional and the intention was very different than where it brought me in the end. What I wanted to say is that in this painting I kind of learned that about myself, that I am able to insert my emotion into my art. Pretty technique is one thing, which is what I was striving for so many years, was to learn the technique, because I admire beautiful pieces of work. I was always like so curious about how people did it, and then I started to learn and experiment and just figure out how to do things. That's basically even what my channel is mostly all about, is the process. There is 
is one another thing what you can inject into your art is that meaning i noticed that also in the comments that you wrote to me is that many of you like me is looking to find a way to insert that meaning and what matters to you and your own personality into your own art i know those types of people who they might not have a brilliant technique they just started out or something but they can go straight to the core and reflect on what's inside them and bring it straight to that artwork and they can develop the technique after the technique is a tool that's how i view it after all those years it's not the main purpose of what we do for me it is so very hard to learn how to inject that meaning into my own art it's kind of hard to open myself the imposter syndrome it probably comes from me being from a completely different background like i studied science and i never was supposed to become an artist i never showed any signs up until i was like 25 years old that i might become an artist i did all kinds of different things with my life somehow it was possible for me to express how i feel and it was a positive sign that i can become a real artist that creates art that is not just pretty but also has some meaning so that's the story of this artwork is one of the most meaningful pieces in this sketchbook this one is not so meaningful <laughs> it was just an exploration of colors what i wanted to just play around was my schminky super granulation horadam desert set which i bought and mainly just get myself used to warmer palettes warmer palettes tend to psychologically communicate that feeling of warmth i did not realized that before so now i was trying to explore that in my works and let me tell you i like that i like the heavy effects in this painting and the overall like warm atmosphere that was eye-opening for me and this painting was lovely and was fun to do this was probably the most surprising piece ever because I did this in an hour. It was a very quick piece. When I created the sketch, it was all wobbly. I really hated that sketch. It turned out so well. Again, I found two colors that work very strongly together and that is this earthy like yellowish green and this red which is like vermilion and it moves towards oranges and those complement each other so nice and the video was was received very well the artwork by itself on instagram was received very well and people tend to admire this sketch when they flip through my sketchbook in my studio this was one of the most rewarding pieces in the entire sketchbook maybe this would be worth it to remake on a larger canvas maybe something with the similar coloring but a different model or pose or something okay this is the page 18 and this study is also on my channel and i made it with a school watercolor set it was a challenge it was supposed to be a fun challenge some channels do these fun challenges very often and i just wanted to try how that would be and i did my best to still create at least like a decent painting with them that's all there is to it <laughs> it was a it was a fun piece Oh, you might be familiar with this one since that was the recent youtube video i tried to paint strong shadows on top of the face i wanted to do a piece that was calming and something more simple so that's why i picked the reference that allowed me just that i was also testing a little bit of these supervision watercolors that are duochrome and also metallic and everything they're very interesting paints i need to explore them in my other sketchbook because because in this sketchbook they got this one page and they create a nice effect but overall I just like the contrast in this piece and that was a relaxing piece you can find it on my patreon as well as some other pieces also a recent piece I did that like last month so many sketches that I did last month yeah that was July this summer 
Just uh, during past couple of months, I did like one third of this sketchbook. As I painted, I learned what I didn't know before when I started is like how to use this sketchbook and sort of do a regular practice. I created one of these once every two months or three months and it was like an event. And nowadays it's not an event anymore. And that's a good thing, you know, just to grab a sketchbook and just casually paint something. It is so beneficial for my practice. So in this one I realized that I'm avoiding darker skin tones. Why is that? Because with watercolor that is very tricky to paint. Watercolor is transparent, mostly a paler technique definitely. Darker skin tones they follow different rules than paler skin tones, you don't have like those completely white highlights most of the time and you have a lot of reflected light. I find it very tricky to do in watercolor, but I still think there is something to find and explore. I definitely want to include them more in my work because they are interesting, they look beautiful and they're challenging to paint. So. The next spread is also a two-page spread. This one was a very recent piece. I love everything about it. I love how it turned out. Warm coloring of this entire composition was very inspiring to me. The warmth really prevails this piece. And I like the dripping effects, the granulation, everything that I just wanted to be present in my work. I also did the flowers very loosely. If I was to paint something like this on a larger canvas, I would give the flowers more detail but not as much because it could steal away from that face. I was surprised by my more opaque watercolors and I think this painting gave them a great purpose because opaquely when I use the dry brush technique with Visteria or Indian Yellow it stayed nicely vibrant even after it was dried and this is a surprise because yellow is always like so transparent that it can't go over dark paint. I used very thick application with a dry brush technique. You can find the entire video with process here but in this video I also talk about my sketchbook habit and some suggestions and recommendations about what to do when you want to start or keep a sketchbook. I spent some time thinking about how this sketchbook improved my work habits. I included all that in that video. And here I have a tiny watercolor sketch that I did during my holiday, did not film, I did not take photos of the process and I also had a photo that inspired me, it was a little girl and it was a very strong sunlight and the skin was very dark, hidden from the sun by that head. I'm sorry I don't like this piece, sadly, because I thought it's gonna be a good one, but on the other hand the, the entire picture is more complex than what I'm used to paint. Uh, it contains a lot more figure and also an animal and that is something that I really need to practice more often. So and this is the last page. I have to say I'm not happy about this last sketch. I had higher hopes for it than what it turned out. I had a limited color combination but I also lost the light a little too soon. I do love the texture of the shirt. That's something that I like but even though a photo of a girl that had that paint on her face worked and it gave the picture like entire different atmosphere than what I achieved here. Like when you look at this you just think that something's wrong with the face, she's sick, I don't know. I did not get that main thought quite across as I hoped and maybe I should have skipped that face paint. I said many times that sketchbook works should not be rushed and you should not feel pressure or anything but as it goes with last pages I was a little bit rushing to finish that last page. I wanted the sketchbook to be done. I already have a new sketchbook that arrived that I felt like so excited about. I'm happy that I did this exercise. I did it over two days. The sketch and the mixing portion and the painting portion definitely taught me a lot but it is not my favorite sketch. And that brings me to the end. That's the end. 
So that's the story of my first finished watercolor sketchbook and all the sketches in it. I hope you had fun and I'm gonna let you pick the new sketchbook that's going to replace this one because it's a very special one but I want to do the entire unboxing and unpacking and the first painting in a separate video. I don't want to push myself to do it right this week because I want the first page to be nice at least like I owe it to that sketchbook creator who put so much thought into that sketchbook book so let me at least show you a peek of it and it is a Koval sketchbook and Tom from Koval sketchbook he made a very very special sketchbook for me a very very special sketchbook and look at it I did not dare to even touch it ever since it arrived it is beautiful it has a special kind of paper in it I'm gonna tell you in that other video when I unbox it and unpack it but it is larger than the previous sketchbook and it contains a cotton paper and I'll be so happy that this very special sketchbook can replace the Strathmore one that I loved so dearly in a video very soon I will unbox unpack and we'll do a first sketch into this sketchbook i can't wait it also makes me a little sad to abandon this one we had fun it was a lot of fun we learned a lot and i will definitely remake some of these pieces into larger paintings first one probably this and if you have any other suggestions which ones would you like to see painted on a larger format remade reworked maybe changed coloring or something which one you felt like it was inspiring enough for me to invest in let me know which one was your favorite thank you very much for watching and if you were thinking on sketchbooking by yourself and you want to hear some of my recommendations best practices what to avoid while your sketchbook you can check out this video over here that i made for you about my best tips to build a sketchbooking habit i'll see you in that one bye